Hello, I'm Nathan Lamb, Director of Outreach and Community Relations at Somerville Cambridge Elder Services. Welcome to Aging Well, a program about issues and concerns facing older adults and people living with disabilities. Our topic today is hospital to home checklists, and we are very pleased to have my fabulous guest here today, Dana Baggery. She's one of our transition facilitators, and she's going to help uh, bring us up to speed on the importance of hospital to home checklist. Yes, thank you for having me. It's great to have you here. So I have to admit I'm a little new to the whole hospital to home checklist thing. Mm -hmm. So what is a hospital to home checklist and why is it important to get this right? So the checklist involves medication management, discharge paperwork, um, following up with primary care doctors and specialists and also linking to community resources mm -hmm. all in the hopes that we can avoid a readmission to the hospital. So what are the most important elements of this checklist for people who want to make sure that they do everything correctly? So for patients that haven't been discharged yet, there are a few things that they can actually do before they go home. Um, the first one is talking to their nurse case manager in the hospital, making sure that all their services are set up at home for them, whether that's a referral to Somerville Cambridge Elder Services for home care services, or insurance counseling, um, and the Visiting Nurses Association as well. Now, for patients that cannot get to the pharmacy once they've been discharged, a lot of hospitals now have a pharmacy in their facility and can do a bedside delivery of medications. So patients can be discharged home with their medications and don't have to worry about going out to pick up new antibiotics. Absolutely. And the importance of doing the follow-up appointment with the primary care doctor the follow-up appointment with the primary care doctor is very important. Um, a lot of times for patients that are in the hospital, the nurse case manager will schedule that appointment for them before they even leave to go home. Um, ultimately, we would like patients to be seen by their primary care doctor within three days. Um, a week is fine, although three days is, is much better. Um, and when they go to their appointments, it's best to bring their after-visit summary or their discharge paperwork with them that outlines what they were treated for, what medications they're taking, and all their upcoming appointments, as well as all the bottles of their medications so that the physician can do um, medication reconciliation there to make sure that they have all their medications with them. Now, sometimes when people are returning home from a hospital stay, they actually need modifications to their home. Mm -hmm. um, how, how, what is the best way to go about making sure, getting that assessment done, making sure that things are ready for when they return home? Uh, getting a gauge on what you're going to need. Is that something that you talk to uh, a care coordinator about? Is that something the hospital can help with? Who handles that mm -hmm. end of things? It depends what services the patient is discharged with. Mm -hmm. um, if a patient is discharged with the Visiting Nurse Association, they can order grab bars, shower chairs, um, raised toilet seats, that type of adaptive equipment. If they're unable to provide that, they can always call Somerville Cambridge Elder Services or another aging service access point program in their area to talk about adaptive equipment and what their needs are going to be. And I've heard that in some cases people opt to go with care coordination services. Can you tell me a little bit about what they do and how they can help people? Sure. So care coordination services can sort of take over everything for the patient um, from managing their social needs and their, their home care services, um, making sure that the family and the patient both feel supported mm -hmm. and ensuring that the client can be successful at home and on their own. Absolutely. Um, and actually you mentioned that again with the, uh, and I think you mentioned that off the top with the requesting of the home care services. Mm -hmm. Is it your experience, because you work in our aging information center, so you talk to people all the time who call Somerville Cambridge Elder Services uh, seeking help with, uh, you know, what resources and supports and services are out there. Is it your experience that people generally know what supports and services are available to them coming in, or is it something where you kind of bring them up to speed? Do people generally, are they generally aware of what's out there for them? We're definitely bringing them up to speed. Mm -hmm. um, especially a lot of the younger elders that we work with. Mm -hmm. um, they're not aware of organizations like Somerville Cambridge Elder Services. They're not aware that their services can be temporary. They think it may just be for the long term and they have to commit to that for the rest of their life. Um, they also 
aren't really aware of a lot of the community organizations that are out there other than the um, other than the Council on Aging to mm -hmm. provide help for them in the home. There are so many options available for seniors in our community. Oh, that's excellent. And in, in the Aging Information Center, you guys help connect them with those resources, find out mm -hmm. if they're eligible for them, mm -hmm. uh, give them advice and guidance. Exactly. And we also have various resources available for them, everything from a list of podiatrists that make home visits mm -hmm. all the way to um, food banks in the area and transportation options. Mm, very good. Now you, you mentioned getting a copy of your discharge plan. I have to admit I'm horrible about getting things in writing from my doctor. Is this something where they generally will just give it to the patient or do you really need to request it? They should be giving it to the patient and the nurse case manager should be going over every step that's in that discharge plan. Um, reviewing what the diagnosis was, any upcoming appointments or tests that they may need to follow up on, mm -hmm. their medications. It includes medications they should start taking, medications they should stop taking, mm -hmm. and ones they should continue taking. Try to make it as easy as possible to have everything in writing for the patient. I love having things in writing. Yours as a reporter definitely taught me that. Yep. Um, so is there anything else that's really of importance for, for this checklist um, of going to hospital to home that we might not have covered? I, I think that's everything. Um, that I was going to bring up. Was there anything else I might have missed? One of the things that I can add is that there are a lot of um, medical community partnerships out there right now. Um, Cambridge Health Alliance has a program called House Calls that does home visits for patients that aren't able to leave their home to make a PCP appointment, a primary care appointment. Mm. It's a great resource. And speaking of great resources, can you tell the people watching who might not be familiar with the um, Aging Information Center, what's the sort of range of things that you can help people there uh, when they call? Sure. So um, we can help with health insurance, counseling, um, anything from mass health applications to open enrollment and Medicare Part D plans. Um, we offer connections to social supports um, in the community, like I had mentioned, the food bank. Mm -hmm. um, organizations that can tutor for English as a second language even, um, adult day health centers, meal sites. Um, there's really, we have everything to be honest. And it's free? It's free. And you guys are open when? We are open in Monday through Friday, nine to five. All right, and we'll, we'll put the number up on the screen for sure. people. Yes. Um, before we do our final segment, we'd like to share some footage from Elder Fair 2016 with you, which was shot by our community partners at Somerville Community Access Television. We we're thrilled to have them as part of the event, and we are really looking forward to sharing some of the great footage they took there. So check it out. Hi, I'm Mary Ann Dalton, and um, we're here today at Elder Fair, which is sponsored by Somerville Cambridge Elder Service. It's an annual event, and um, we have over 50 vendors here today, and um, they're here to uh, provide information to older people, uh, pe their caregivers, family members, um, some younger folks living with disabilities. These vendors provide like a whole range of services that um, help older people remain independent in their own homes. We have transportation vendors, uh, medical providers, assisted living providers. We have um, folks who are here from Social Security to help people discover some of their options in terms of, you know, retirement income, um, their be their Medicare benefits, uh, and um, that's what Somerville Cambridge Elder Services is all about. We want to provide people with as many options and choices uh, for independent living because it really, um, it really is possible if you plan to, you know, live a healthy, long life in the community, um, surrounded by your friends and family and things you love to do, and um, and that's and that's what we do. We're a gateway. Somerville Cambridge Elder Services is really the gateway for uh, information about services for older people and caregivers and some younger people living with disabilities. We can tell you uh, people about um, all the programs that are available to them from home care 
to transportation, to Meals on Wheels. Uh, there's, there's so much out there now. And I think that the first thing that people need to do is just to call and to ask about the resources. They, um, there's, there's so much that you can take advantage of today to uh, you know, really um, live, live well in the community. So my name is Rose and I work with Samaritans and we are a suicide prevention organization. We're located right by Downtown Crossing and what most people know us for is we have this 24-hour hotline that people can call or text any time of the day for whatever reason. So we know that especially for seniors, a lot of them feel like they don't have um, a support network, someone that they can talk to, and the loneliness, the isolation, it's all, it's, it's a very serious thing for seniors, and the suicide rate is actually very high for, well, middle-aged white men have the highest suicide rate, and then for elders, it's, it's a really serious problem. So we try to be there in their time of need just to listen, support them, and just to be a non-judgmental person who will be there 24 hours a day. And that's sort of what we try to do to support elders, but we also do community outreach and education, trying to educate elders and people that work with elders about what are the signs of suicide, what are risk factors, warning signs, and how do you cope with your stress? How do you cope with the isolation and the loneliness that you're feeling? And I'm with Natalie Company and Safety Care. Mm -hmm. So we specialize in grab bar installations, but any equipment that helps the elderly and disabled we are specialized in that. Wheelchair ramps, stair lifts, chair lifts, the whole nine yards. I'm Kathy Hoey, and this is... I'm Lillian. And we're from the Cambridge Health Alliance. We do uh, geriatric psychiatry. Um, we are uh, doing mental health services to people uh, who are referred to us from their primary care doctors from the Cambridge Health Alliance. Uh, we also uh, have a clinic at 26 Central Street. We see clients there, but we also do home visiting in the Cambridge and Somerville area, um, in the other buildings, Somerville Home, a number of places that we see folks. So I'm really passionate about the work we do at Somerville Cambridge Elder Services because it really is all about providing people with options. I think for too long, people felt like as they aged, they only had one option and that was to go into a nursing home. And we're finding more and more that there are people are able to um, you know, live at home, to stay at home, even when they have a lot of physical limitations. There are programs that can help people um, stay in the place that they, they want to do and, and make the choices that they want to make every day. And um, I mean, I think that's why I feel passionate about el elder services is that we're advocates for, for helping people um, have that desire fulfilled. And um, there's no reason why people should feel that um, you know, institutionalization is an inevitability for them. And um, you know, the first step is for families to seek out this information um, on behalf of their loved ones or for individuals who want to know what their options are. It's just to, to call us and to talk to our staff. They're, they are really passionate about helping older people find, um, find the kind of living situation that they truly want to be in. Hi, my name is Rod Pave. I'm with United Healthcare. Just want to say thank you for having us. Our plan is the Senior Care Options Plan. Uh, we have a contract with the state of Massachusetts as well as the federal government, Mass Health and Medicare, to provide additional benefits to seniors over the age of 65 with Mass Health Standard. Uh, it's a no-cost program. We provide additional coverage such as complete prescription coverage, glasses, hearing aids, transportation, as well as full dental. So we thank you very much. We love the opportunity to spread awareness and hopefully we've um, given out some good information to the folks in the community. I'm here with Mr. Lloyd Mann, and like myself, he's the first time at this event. So, tell me, what brought you out today? Well, the rain brought me out, but it brings out a lot of other people for a lot of good information. And uh, all these tables have a lot of wonderful pastime and talking to people and getting acquainted with uh, health care and... and uh, it's just a just a wonderful program to, to keep going and coming to every year, and I have a great time. I, I meet a lot of new different people, nurses, and uh, different programs that I can get 
acquainted with to visit and see what they're like. Elder service plan. Okay. It, we and, um, enroll, we serve people that are 55 plus and who might have need for showers or bathing, need more assist. And we can take them, we have a whole team that walks them right through the entire healthcare spectrum, share the care with the people. We call them participants because we want them to participate in their own healthcare, as well as any caregivers they may have on board. We can provide assisted living and even nursing home care. Years and years ago, I got an AARP thing in the mail that said they needed money managers. So I signed up and I have been helping a blind lady for seven years. Pay her bills and open her mail, etc. I think there will be more and more need for services available to aging citizens. They need to call Somerville Cambridge Elder Services, okay. 61 Medford Street in Somerville. We have over 300 volunteers and there are so many ways to get involved with Somerville Cambridge Elder Services. Um, you can um, go to our website www.eldercare.org or give us a call at 617-628-2601 and talk to our staff and they can explain the many ways um, that you can help uh, your community and the older people in your community. Welcome back. I'm Nathan Lamb, Director of Outreach and Community Relations for Somerville Cambridge Elder Services. This is Aging Well, our monthly program on issues and concerns that matter to older adults and people living with disabilities. And we are still here with my outstanding guest, Dana Baggery, who's one of our transition facilitators. Mm -hmm. Welcome back. Thank you. Great to have you. So we are discussing hospital to home checklists. Mm -hmm. I have to admit, I'm a huge fan of telling people what not to do. It is yep. <laughs> right up there on my list. And so basically, we have this handy checklist we made of common hospital to home mistakes. Mm -hmm. And I was just hoping that maybe we could go over some of the most common mistakes and help our viewers avoid some of these common pitfalls. Sure. Um, so one of the most important things is having medication at home. So if patients have been discharged with new prescriptions, they absolutely should get them filled, especially if it's an antibiotic um, or insulin, other diabetes-related medication, medication that should be started immediately. Yeah. Um, and sometimes we do have patients come back to the hospital because they didn't have their meds available. And a lot of time that comes down to transportation issues or not having a friend or family member that can do that for them. Um, so one of the things that our program does is help arrange transportation for patients if they need to pick up medications. Very important. Very important. Absolutely. And uh, I know I'm circling back to the doctor's appointment, but we mm -hmm. felt it was so important we'd mention it twice. How important is that primary care doctor appointment? Very important. Very important. We've had patients that have skipped their primary care appointments because they said that they felt too sick to go, mm -hmm. um, which is a perfect reason to go to see your primary care doctor. Um, what happens instead is those patients still feel lousy when the evening comes and they end up coming back to the emergency room because they're dealing with a lot of the same issues that they had before and they're scared, understandably. Um, so we can alleviate a lot of that anxiety by having patients attend their primary care appointments. There's probably some value added by seeing the primary care doctor because they will know the patient and their history better mm -hmm. than if they go down to the emergency room. Exactly. And sometimes their doctor, since they do know them so well, wants to make different types of changes to their medication because they know the patient. Um, so it's another reason why it's important. The emergency room probably is no one's first option if they can be a little more proactive. Exactly. Yeah. We really want to make sure that patients are being more proactive about their care and taking care of themselves. Oh, excellent. So here's an interesting one. Don't feel you need to rely on the family for full time hands-on care? Yep. Is that is that a common, how, how does that one play out? A lot of times we'll see patients in the hospital that may have arrived because their caregivers are burnt out. 
Um, so organizations like Somerville Cambridge Elder Services that can provide care um, will step in to supplement what the caregiver is doing. Um, and there's a few different programs over at Elder Services, but they can help with things like homemaking, bathing, um, transportation, get one of those lifeline, the I've fallen and I can't get up button. Sure. Um, we can make sure patients have that, as well as little things like grocery shopping, laundry, those kinds of supports. Now, in, in your experience, um, is it a case where a lot of times people will want to rely on family instead of seeking outside help? Is that, is that one of those factors that you kind of have to deal with in these sorts of things? A reluctance to seek assistance uh, when people need it? Is this something that you see or, is, or are there other uh, factors in play? We actually see it from the patient as well as the caregiver. Um, we do have caregivers that want to be the full care provider and they don't want to have anybody else coming in um, just because they're concerned about their parents, so they're the one that wants to be there 24-7. Mm -hmm. um, for patients, a lot of that actually happens when, it, um, when discussions about bathing come up. Mm -hmm. um, patients are very uncomfortable, understandably so, with having someone they don't know help them get washed up every day. Certainly. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I know at Somerville Cambridge Elder Services, we do have the great program, um, Adult Family Care, we which do. supports the caregivers, um, which is really just such a great program. Um, and it's interesting because the things I've heard about it, a lot of it is actually supporting the caregivers to make sure they don't burn out. Yep. Um, and uh, But there's some eligibility requirements there too. But. There are, yeah. Caregiver burnout is a really big issue. Um, so we really try to step in and, and do what we can to make sure they feel supported that, so the patient gets the best care that they need. And I guess that goes back to knowing what um, supports are available and getting in touch with the uh, Aging Information Center at Somerville Cambridge Elder Services if they have Absolutely. questions about yep. what's available. Absolutely. Happy to answer any questions they may have. And uh, I see one more here. Uh, asking for written instructions if prescribed new medications, told to do new activities, or advised to follow a certain diet. So it's, it's again, it's, there's not really a general expectation that they can give you instructions, but they don't give it in writing. Mm -hmm. That's terrifying because I remember nothing, basically, and I need yep. things to be written down. And so they should be getting that. It's, it's something where they should ask and should be able to receive it fairly easily. Yes, a lot of that information should be on their discharge summary. Any changes about their diet, um, foods that they should be avoiding, foods that they should absolutely be eating, um, mm -hmm. that information can be given to them as well by a nutritionist in the hospital. Once patients are home, if they really need more information about their nutrition and how to eat around like this new, these new, um, requirements. new requirements that they've been given, thank you. Um, we have a nutritionist at Somerville Cambridge Elder Services that can do home visits. She can also do phone consultations and review all that information to make sure the patient really understands what they should be doing to take care of themselves. And, they, and people can access that service by contacting the Aging Information Center? Yes. That's, uh, that's outstanding. My doctor will write down instructions and I will not be able to read her writing. Really? It's not printed out on the computer? I think, I think as we move towards this like mobile printout sort of uh, world, but she's given me handwritten notes and I look at it and I'm like, I, I don't know what to make of that. Yeah, that's not very helpful. <laughs> <laughs> so, so be sure to ask for something in writing that you can decipher. Absolutely. And I guess uh, one other aspect of things uh, we'll touch on to wrap things up. Um, I was curious if you could tell me a little bit about the Care Transitions Program at Somerville Cambridge Elder Services. Sure. So our Care Transitions Program is called Hospital to Home. We started the program in 2012 in conjunction with Cambridge Health Alliance. So myself and another transition facilitator um, have a space over at Cambridge Hospital so that we can meet with patients when they've been admitted, introduce ourselves, introduce the program. Um, we also have a nurse practitioner that can see patients as well. So between the three of us, um, we make home visits, we do phone calls, we follow up with patients for basically a month making sure that they have everything that they need. For some patients, that means it's just a phone call. 
reminding them of appointments, just checking in to say, you know, hey, how are you doing? Want to make sure you don't have any questions or anything. Mm -hmm. um, and then for some, it's the more in-depth stuff like mass health applications, setting up home care services, linking to other community supports, those kinds of things. And the focus of the program is helping them with that hospital to home. Yep, to help with the transition. Absolutely. And who is this program available to? Right now, the program is available to patients with Medicare. Um, we are working on expanding that right now since it has been so successful. Mm -hmm. So we have the program at Somerville, Cambridge, which is based out of Cambridge Hospital. And then Mystic Valley Elder Services, which is another aging, aging services access point, um, covers Widden Hospital and the Hallmark System, which includes Melrose Wakefield and Lawrence Memorial Hospitals. So basically, if I understand correctly, uh, your team takes a lot of this knowledge, which we've just shared with our viewers, and you guys kind of apply it to people who are coming out of the hospital, making yes. sure that the checklist is followed and, and, and things exactly. of that nature. So, exactly. So it's kind of a support for uh, ensuring that's done correctly. Yeah. We want to make sure patients feel supported and that they have a place to go to if they have any questions or concerns. That's awesome. And just to remember, the Aging Information Center at Somerville Cambridge Sur uh, Elder Services, always a great place to go if yes. you have questions about services and supports. Uh, that's all the time we have for today. Uh, again, I'm Nathan Lamb. I want to thank Dana Baggery one last time for being such a fantastic guest. Thank you. Uh, thanks again for joining us. We'll see you next time.